The first Joker movie was a rousing success that rocked the world. By contrast, the sequel, Joker Folie A Deux, is rocking Hollywood, with its complete and total box office collapse and wide-scale audience rejection not seen this side of the Marvels. We're about to explore that, and what repercussions a failure of this magnitude will have in Hollywood, in this postmortem. Let's dive in. This video is sponsored by Fume. Despite the entertainment media's best efforts to scare audiences away, the original Joker rocked the world upon release five years ago. It became the biggest R-rated film in history up till that point, and remained so for half a decade, until Deadpool and Wolverine overtook it earlier this year, a movie which gave audiences what they wanted, I might add. Still, five years is quite the run as a record holder though, and let's not forget, the first Joker even outgrossed Star Wars The Rise of Palpatine, and that shook Hollywood to its core. Though not as badly as how quickly and how brutally the sequel, Folie A Deux, fell apart at the box office. For something that was so anticipated to come down like a house of cards this way is almost unprecedented, and we're about to break down the hows and the whys here and you're gonna be tempted to light a cigarette for that. You really shouldn't though, as neither smoking, nor for that matter vaping, are good for you. And there is a so much better alternative, namely flavored air. That's right, flavored air. It's a whole movement towards better habits, and it's led by Fume, the sponsor of this video. If you haven't heard about flavored air before, then think of it this way. If vaping is a sticky soda, then flavored air is herbal tea, and Fume is an award-winning flavored air device. It looks awesome with a weighted, high-quality design. It's made to be fidgeted with, complete with soothing snaps and clicks, thus filling the void of any habit you may want to ditch. Fume has lots of delicious flavors to choose from, like crisp mint, my personal favorite, as well as orange vanilla, another popular choice. There's no vapor, so you can use it anywhere, and obviously, there's no addictive nicotine. On the contrary, Fume continuously invests in third-party studies to ensure the safety of their products. And what is more, Fume is backed by doctors in the US. With flavored air, you can satisfy your fixation through a passive diffusion system that utilizes no electronics, no batteries, no vapor, and no combustion. Fume has served over 300,000 customers, and you can be the next success story. For a limited time, use our code Midnight's Edge to get your free topper. It's the perfect accessory to your Fume device. Slip it onto the mouthpiece for a softer, warmer feel. It's chewable for those who love to fidget, and it's reusable. Head to tryfume.com, that's tryfum.com, and use code Midnight's Edge, or scan the QR code on screen to get your free Fume topper when you order your Johnny Pack today. Thanks to Fume for sponsoring this video, and with that, to set the stage for this total Joker implosion, let's begin with recapping just how big a deal the original Joker movie was. It wasn't just that it earned a lot more money than anyone had anticipated. No, it was the cultural impact which made the first movie an event, and it was that cultural impact many in Hollywood feared, misunderstood at the time, and still don't understand to this day. Their worry was that the Joker would be some kind of incel rallying figure that audiences would want to be like in every dysfunctional antisocial detail. But that's not what happened, even though there are some who continue to suffer under that delusion. No one wants to actually be like Arthur Fleck, but his alienation and hopeless situation against an oppressive system that didn't care one iota about him struck a chord around the globe. The first Joker was explicitly made in the image of Taxi Driver and King of Comedy, but perhaps unintentionally, it also has shades of Falling Down and Teddy Gilliam's Brazil, and this is why it struck a chord worldwide. 
Let's rewatch that snippet from our coverage from November of 2019, after the movie was a certified global hit. The movie did become a symbol, but not of incels or disenfranchised white males. Instead, it has become a symbol of rebellion. It has become a symbol of resistance to oppression. The Joker mask has appeared in popular uprisings in everywhere from Chile to Beirut, from Iraq to Hong Kong. According to William Blank, historian and author of the book Superheroes, A Political History, Todd Phillips' film about the Joker has real evocative power. In his words, it echoes a form of protest against a political system that people believe is inflexible and not listening to the people. If the powers that be had understood and embraced the true reasons for the appeal of that movie and then made the right sequel to it, and had that out inside of three years, that could have been an even bigger hit than the first movie, so I don't begrudge the studio for wanting a sequel. Alas, they waited two years too long, and making matters worse, the powers that be never understood why the movie clicked with the audience the way that it did. On the contrary, they seemed concerned that the wrong kind of people liked the first movie for the wrong reasons. And so, the powers that be went out of their way to show the audience why Arthur Fleck was no one to empathize with, and why everyone who ever did, for any reason whatsoever, was wicked and misguided. Telling audiences to stop your rioting and listen to your betters, you incel. Meaning, they made the wrong movie. Case in point, this is a case where both the critics and the audience agree that this was atrocious, even worse than the Marvels, and worse than the reviews is the box office. Before the truly negative reviews were out, early domestic opening weekend projections had the sequel pegged at 70 million, which itself was disappointing considering that the first movie opened to 96 million, and this one was four times as expensive to make. This lack of interest before even the worst of reviews hit can be attributed to the very early reports that this was going to be a musical of sorts and that Lady Gaga was hired to this end. Because unlike what the filmmakers may have thought, the built-in audience for a movie like Joker generally aren't all that into musicals. And then the real audience reviews from fan screenings hit, and that's when everyone decided to stay away in droves. In the end, the movie opened to a mere 37 million in its domestic opening weekend, half of the early projections, which already were bad. Such a complete collapse in such a short period of time is practically unheard of, and the cause is crystal clear to everyone. Director and story driver Todd Phillips, who had complete creative control, screwed up. And he screwed up all by himself, as Variety reports that he wanted nothing to do with DC, meaning James Gunn, whose camp probably leaked this particular story, as they're washing their hands of this disaster. Phillips reportedly had no interest in feedback from any other creatives, especially not creatives who are well versed in the realm of comics, and DC comics in particular, so he only dealt with Warner executives Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi. So for all practical purposes, he essentially isolated himself in a creative echo chamber. And now that the floppage is a fact, everyone else at Warner is very keen for the rest of Hollywood to know that. Because no one wants to be associated with this disaster, including, after the fact, some of the people on screen. The one reportedly taking this the worst, outside of Todd Phillips himself, who spent premiere weekend hiding on a farm, is Lady Gaga. She no doubt thought this was going to be another major hit for her, but according to the UK's Daily Mail, she is in shock at the movie's reception, and just wants to move on to the next role as quickly as possible. She reportedly was also upset that so many of her scenes were cut, but if anything, she should be overjoyed that they were, because reportedly one of them had her killing the Joker at the end of the movie and taking over his mantle. I can't believe that, because that is kind of what the movie had set up, and if she's shocked at the response to the movie now, I wonder what she would have been if they had kept that ending. Luckily for her, they evidently realized that that was taking things one step too far. But still, clearly, mistakes were made.
In their breakdown of what happened here, Deadline Hollywood cited a Hollywood marketer saying, this isn't a box office marketplace problem, this is a creative development problem. Which means you can't blame this failure on the economy or lockdowns or anything else, because it was supposed to open to minimum twice what it did just a few days before the reviews. So this is simply a case of them having made the wrong movie. Deadline Hollywood continues their post-mortem, saying, The failure of Joker Folie a deux is as clear as an azure sky of deepest summer. No fan of the original movie wanted to see a musical sequel, Mr. Phillips, period. See, Todd Phillips is to blame here. They continue, There isn't enough lipstick to put on this Joker to indicate that it's any kind of a win. The original fans of this film, which, let's face it, are fanboys and men, because they bought tickets at 60%, kicked this clown to the street with a D cinema score and half a star on post-track. Anyone feeling Megalopolis Deja Vu from last weekend, you're not imagining things. That movie received a D-plus cinema score. The difference here, of course, is that Warners spent more marketing than Zotrope and Lionsgate to get this Joaquin Phoenix Lady Gaga sequel to some cultural global relevance. This is true, the musical angle didn't help, but there's more to it, which Deadline Hollywood won't admit to, because being part of the entertainment media complex, there's a limit to how clear they can be in some of their takes. As such, blaming the musical angle is acceptable, but we all know the real issues run far deeper, so let's do what Deadline Hollywood won't and address the even bigger bone of contention, namely the humiliation and degradation of Arthur Fleck. Even with the awareness that the movie was a musical, it was still tracking to open to 70 million in its domestic opening weekend. But that was before the more disturbing plot elements leaked from fan screenings. Plot elements like Arthur Fleck being publicly humiliated in front of his world. Then the prison guards did to him what Diddy allegedly did to Justin Bieber, only without a thousand liters of baby oil, and adding insult to humiliation. Harley Quinn then dumped him at his lowest point. And then finally, when he had lost everything, he died in a prison shanking while someone with no ties to him took over his name, Ray Skywalker style. Quite the sad ending there for Arthur Fleck, though to play devil's advocate for a moment, it was an ending that in a sense had been set up in the previous movie. This Joker was obviously no criminal mastermind. He was never going to be, and he wouldn't have lasted two seconds against Batman, if the Batman of this world was old enough to stand up to him. Ever since the release of the first movie, Todd Phillips always hinted that Fleck might not be the real Joker that Batman ultimately goes up against, but rather that Fleck is the one who inspired the eventual real Joker to become the Joker, a notion that he indeed has doubled down on since. This was also the point of the Looney Tunes-style animated intro, where Fleck's shadow represents the Joker persona who screws Fleck over at every turn, because it's too big for him and in need of another host, as Fleck could never live up to the legend he inadvertently created. This story element was always there. The problem is that after this animated prologue, the movie goes out of its way to brutalize and tear down Arthur Fleck. And in the process, anyone who might have empathized with him for any reason, perhaps implying that people like that are to blame for a certain day in January. There were many ways a Joker sequel could have gone, and while director Todd Phillips did go with one that arguably had been set up, he still managed to find the single most offensive and pretentious way of executing it dragging out every boring story point with the musical sequence the built-in audience were never going to respond to, as musicals are not for everyone in the first place. And this was made even worse by the songs being such boring crap on top of that. Deadline Hollywood continues placing the blame squarely at the feet of Todd Phillips, saying, The biggest promotional cardinal sin of them all, launching the sequel which didn't have the goods at the Venice Film Festival. Why would any studio put the movie out there and let it sit on Rotten Tomatoes for a month with bad reviews? 
Sources tell me, me being the Deadline Hollywood reporter, it was all part of Warner Brothers appeasing Phillips, which is why they allowed him to make this autorish Stephen Sondheim-like feature in the first place. Between the Hangover franchise and Joker, Warner Brothers has reaped 2.5 billion off a of Phillips fare at the box office. What do you do with a director who's done that much for you? Give him final cut. He won't be getting that again anytime soon. And after this weekend, Todd Phillips owes Warner a hit for letting them down so badly with his vision this time around. Beyond that, there will be no further consequences from this flop, because as pointed out in Variety, no one did anything wrong here. Phillips has earned the studio billions in the past. He was right about the first movie, and the studio got burned for not fully believing him then. So while Phillips' vision didn't quite align with audience preferences this time around, no executive could have known that for sure up front. So the mistake would have been to not give him everything he wanted. In other words, this one will simply be chalked up to the cost of business, and everyone will move on. Though this does put even more pressure on James Gunn's Superman reboot next year, because there's a lot of DC bombs in a row right now. All told, The Joker 2 was pretentious tripe from a filmmaker who completely believed in his own hype and who didn't understand the appeal of his own previous movie. And for that, Warner and the DC brand, and the health of comic book movies in general, will pay the price. Do you think there should be further repercussions? And if so, which ones? Let me know in the comments. And before you go, remember that for a limited time, you can use our code MIDNIGHTSEDGE to get your free topper. It's the perfect accessory to your fume device. Head to tryfume.com, that's tryfum.com, and use code MIDNIGHTSEDGE. Or scan the QR code on screen to get your free fume topper when you order your journey pack today. Today.